it's Jess and I am back with another process video to share with you all today. This uh, layout was made based on a class that I took as part of the scrapbook and cards today uh, delivered collection. So that's the, that's the layout that we made in the class that I showed very briefly on screen there. And I am going to be using the same 6x8 Jen Hadfield, I think it's, it's either Peaceful Heart or Reaching Out. I can't quite remember. I did show it at the beginning of the video, and I have already selected my papers from the paper pad. It's definitely a different color scheme than I typically will do, but it's um, a color scheme that I, I, I enjoy doing. It's different for me, but I quite enjoyed um, doing it. So here I'm just cutting down mats for my photos and I am using my scissors and I'm going to tear some of the edges just for something a little bit different to do. Um, I did speed this video up a fair amount because I knew in my head that I didn't have a lot to talk about. So I didn't want to just be sitting here, you know, waffling on about So for this layout, I am using a square photograph. I cut it down from the original 4x6 into most likely 4x4. That's generally what I use when I use a square photograph. I did cut out the background. So this photo was taken in Trafalgar Square. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. I'm almost positive. Um, in London. And I know that in my album there are going to be other um, layouts around this that have the same fountains and buildings in, in them already so I didn't really feel like I needed this layout or this picture to be in its full form to um, accomplish what I needed for this layout. I really just wanted a photo of my husband and I. Oh, sorry, that yawn caught me really off guard. Usually I can tell when they're coming, but that one just caught me off guard. Okay, he took a sip of water, so let's see if that helps. Um, anyway, <laughs> like I was saying, I just wanted a photo of my husband and I because I knew I wanted to use that uh, little square card that said love. For the embellishments, I did cut them out of a piece of pattern paper that was in the paper pad. And I think I have the sticker book that matches this collection as well. And I am inking everything with um, probably brown ink, I would imagine. So for the border, obviously I'm using 6x8 paper, so if you did cut it on the 8 inch length you could get more of an offset border but that's what I did in the first layout as part of the class so I decided for this layout I was going to do the oh sorry oh my goodness they yawning today oh I was going to do a more um even regimented equal border I guess for lack of a better term I should have had this layout out in front of me. I put away all my layouts and this I made this a while ago. So yes. So the thing to keep in mind if you're using papers that are smaller than 12 by 12 is that sometimes you have to manipulate them to fit what you need them to do. <laughs> So here, for example, I'm using the butterfly print, and I wanted it to go above and below the photo, but I didn't have a piece that was long enough, I guess. I was, try I was going back and forth between wide enough and long enough, but I think it's long enough. Long enough to do that. I am putting my photo block up foam squares just for something different to do. Oh yeah, I forgot that I can't find that little piece. 
I was looking for it the other day and then I just stopped. The little uh, pin that goes on the top of my glue. I should really find it. It's on my desk somewhere. It's just gotten, you know, shuffled underneath something else, but I do really need to find it. Back to the paper, like I was saying. Um, you do have to manipulate or I guess manipulate is the best word, the paper into being um, how do I say this? You want the paper to visually look like it's a larger piece of paper than it really is. That's what I'm trying to say. So for the butterfly piece of paper, they're just two thin strips, but visually on the layout, it appears like there's a full piece of paper behind that photo block. Yes. I am using photo corner stickers. Um, I don't use them a lot, but I thought that they would be fun to use. I think those were actually from Heidi Swap sticker sheet, as are those definition stickers, I believe. I don't think those came with the Jen Hadfield sticker book. I could be wrong. I'm really not sure. I don't remember offhand what came in each sticker book, to be honest. Basically, whatever I'm doing on the top left of the page, I'm repeating again down at the bottom So that's what I am doing there. My microphone says that it's picking up noise, but I don't know what noise it would be picking up because it says it's picking up noise while I'm not talking. So I might have to look into that because that's very strange. Unless I can hear the like air conditioning in the background. I'm not sure. I will have to look into that and um, before my next video usually it goes down to no green bars if I'm not talking but it's staying at three green bars <laughs> when I'm not talking so that's interesting here I'm just embellishing like I said whatever I put at the top left I try to repeat at the bottom right I've not had a coffee today perhaps that's why I keep yawning I was going to make a coffee before I came down and then I thought no I'm going to be doing some video editing and if I make a coffee then it will get cold because I can't drink it while I'm editing because of the slurpy noises <laughs> so I didn't do that and maybe I should have made one and drank it before I started editing lesson learned apparently <laughs> for next time these butterfly stamps are from Catherine Pooler, and I think they're called something like uh, Fly Away or Flight something. I probably don't have that correct, but it's something like that. I am going to stamp them onto, I don't know if I stamp them onto a different piece of paper. Oh, I'm not using the butterflies. I'm using a heart or a little tiny butterfly, sorry. I am using Distress Oxide inks to match the colors of the uh, pattern papers. I believe I'm using mm, dried marigold, saltwater taffy, and, oh, there we go, tattered rose. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's that lightest one called. I can remember. I don't use these inks often in combination with each other. So the lightest one I did with the darkest, like most solid stamp first in the lighter color. And then for this one, I'm using like a bubble. It's like three little circles together. They kind of look like bubbles, which I thought was appropriate because we're standing in front of a fountain. Um, for this stamping, I just wanted it to kind of extend onto the white portion of the background just so I, I knew I had the border at the top and the bottom but I really wanted something that went 
from the top to the bottom on a diagonal through the photo just to give it a little bit of movement and something to just tie in the top, middle, and bottom of the layout. Um, sometimes I do that, sometimes I just leave it, but in this case I really wanted to add that to it. I'm just showing you there that I have little, you can see it there in the bottom corner, that I have little dots on all my oxide inks that um, I guess swatch. I guess it's a really tiny little swatch. <laughs> swatch out the color so you can see what it actually looks like when it oxidizes. The Distress Oxide inks do change color as they oxidize. So some of them, especially some of the reds, I think, look really bold and vibrant when you first put it down. But then when it oxidizes, it changes to like a chalky, almost some of them have like a gray cast on top of them. But that is everything. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you later.